Welcome back to the channel. Um, this is not going to be a tanking video. Um, a lot of players complain about um, network performance given that um, the game client's on your PC and the server is in either Hong Kong or in Sydney. Um, so we're just going to go through how to basically diagnose your connection. Uh, the tool we're looking at is a has a free version. Uh, the tool is called Ping Plotter, and this is called Ping Plotter Free. Um, you can download it from Ping Plotter, and I'll put a link in the um, how the information below um, to where to download it from. I've also got an article on the forums which gives similar explanation, so I'll link to that as well, just so you can uh, read through that as well, just to um, in case you don't want to go and play this again. Um, so essentially what Ping Plotter does is um, lets you put in a target IP address, which will be the destination that you're trying to reach. Um, and if you're not familiar with um, this, um, we've got two addresses for the Wargaming uh, connections. Uh, one for the Hong Kong server, which is called whatasia2.login.wargaming.net and the ANZ server is at whatasia3.login.wargaming.net. Um, so we'll just ping up the Hong Kong server, which is probably the most problematic for people, particularly in Australia, but also from the Asian countries. So you see, um, when you click on the end of the uh, list uh, target name, you get a list of things that have been used before, uh, just to make it easier, so you don't have to keep typing it again. So we'll pick what Azure 2 as being the Hong Kong server, and it starts to dynamically draw the uh, list of hops that goes through. Now, if you want to replicate this from the command line in your PC, you would use the netstat command with a minus R switch to get the routing, which is the all the different hops. And then you'd have to ping command to ping the network address of each of those hops to get the same result. So ping plotter basically lets you put those functions together and gives you a, an easier to use result. So let's have a look at the screen and see what we see. So firstly, we've got the number of hops that your traffic goes through. And in this list, you can see this 14 total to get from my um, home router down to the actual front gate into the Wargaming um, servers in the Hong Kong area. Um, each hop is basically a change from one network address space to another. So it's going from one router to another. So the name here is the name of the router. Uh, the IP address here is the IP address of that gateway or router to go from one network to the other. Um, so basically it stays within your ISP's network until the point that it gets handed off to international carriers. So depending on who your ISP is, that might happen earlier in the journey. Um, or if your ISP happens to um, basically have international carriage themselves, then um, it will go from the broadband network in country to to their uh, carrier network to get to the overseas location and then get to the final destination. If you're basically with a smaller ISP, that might hand off within country to another ISP um, and then onto a global carrier. Um, and a lot depends on then how your ISP basically arranges for that international carriage. So with the bigger um, companies, they will have an agreement um, with the international carriers. So if their traffic gets carried, there's a uh, sort of a rate that they pay um, for that, or if they and if they pay the least amount, then they basically get lower priority when it comes to congestion on the networks. So what are we trying to measure here? So there's really two things that we're trying to measure: the uh, ping, or otherwise known as um, latency, which is the time it takes in milliseconds for the uh, traffic to go from your endpoint to whatever the destination hop is and all the hops in between. So this column here is the current rate, which has been dynamically updated every few seconds, um, showing what the time in milliseconds it is to reach and getting to the final address. Um, it's showing currently 124, uh, 125. So um, it's taking basically 0.12 to 0.13 of a second um, for the traffic from your computer um, interface to uh, through your router to to the endpoint, and um, 
The second thing we're trying to measure is a characteristic called packet loss, or other one is known as lag. And this is basically when um, the internet packets uh, or the network packets are basically rejected by the each of the hops. And this comes down to how heavily loaded they are. It's not something we can measure here, but essentially if the CPU of the router is overloaded, it will try and shed packets and the uh, internet protocols are basically designed to allow that and to resend packets when required. And this is what basically creates the sense of lag in the signal. So this column here will show any packet loss being um, discovered, but I'll just be I'll give you a word of caution. So if it's showing 100% here, but there's no other information showing on that line, then it's most likely that the uh, people managing that particular device have turned off the ability for it to respond to the type of packets that Ping is sending out. So that's really just misleading and saying 100% of the packets are getting dropped, but that's because it's rejecting all the ICMP packets that the ping command is sending out. Um, so it wouldn't matter whether it was running at a high load or a low load, you just wouldn't know because you can't measure it. So that's why it's showing at as 100%. But if we were getting something that was say loading at say 40% packet loss, it would show in the column here uh, relevant to the particular network node that was rejecting it and that would give you an indication. Now one other thing is that um, what we're measuring here is the network performance across the internet from your personal computer to the gateway into the game servers, but it doesn't show the end-to-end -end performance of your client to the game server itself. So within game, you might experience um, uh, latency due to the way that the game servers are performing. Uh, if they're overloaded, then they can introduce latency there, but we can't reach into the Wargaming network. So really we, all we can do is measure here. So what is the point of doing this? Well, it's the first step in diagnosing what your problem is and then what you should do about it. If you are experiencing latency in the game or packet loss, um, you know, higher latency than normal or packet loss, you want to know, okay, who do I talk to to try and resolve this? If the issues are happening in different phases, we can work out who to think. If it's happening really on the first line at that showing, I've got um, latency that is more than uh, a few milliseconds, then that's my router and I can restart it and it might just reset its problems. Routers can over time, if they're not um, stopped and started, uh, can basically um, get performance issues and that, that's something that's in your control. If it's happening in the next few hops, you can basically look at the name and you can see who manages it. So this is all Telstra traffic um, all the way through to um, Perth, where it's basically getting handed off to the Telstra Global, which is their international carrier. And basically anything here is your ISP. Um, and then once you've determined it's been handed off from your ISP to, um, to another player, then it's basically the international carrier. But your ISP is the person who's responsible for the end-to-end -end carriage of your traffic from your router to your endpoint. So I'd still go back to your ISP give them the results here if you think it's not satisfactory and show them the pictures and the data you've collected and that will help you get a response from them particularly if help you get onto second line response um, technical support now if the packet loss is happening down at the bottom end then that's going to be wargaming and you can raise a ticket through wargaming's customer support and again given this evidence there will be a few um, uh, articles that they have on their customer support site to help you provide information to them, but certainly ping plotter results um, is a way of doing that. So one way you can do that is simply to take a screenshot of that um, and you can use the snipping tool or you can use the, the screenshot tools and basically to capture the image and send it to there. So um, that's sort of the introduction to it. Um, we will do another video talking about tools that can give you some extra benefit. Um, so these are tools like Mudfish and WTFast, and we'll go into those into another video. But just um, basically the last sort of comment to make is one of the things you can get used to is looking at the way your traffic is traveling and put that on a geographical basis. So you can see here it goes from my gateway and I'm in Melbourne, so it's going to Telstra servers in Melbourne and help, they've helpfully labeled these things. So it's going Melbourne, Adelaide, Perth, Perth to 
these addresses and I can look them up using the WHOIS tool on the internet and I'll find these addresses in Hong Kong. So it's basically going um, Singapore, Hong Kong, and Hong Kong is where the server is. So I think that's a straightforward route. may not be the most direct route, um, but it's probably the best route that Telstra have, so they will do that. And there you go, I just noticed a little bit of packet loss here, just so you can see what it looks like. And it's in a very low, low rate. Um, but uh, if you find that the traffic's going basically around the map, if it's going um, Perth, Singapore, Singapore, Tokyo, Tokyo, Hong Kong, then it's taking extra steps that it may not need to do. And that's a routing change. So this is the sort of information you can bring back to your ISP and ask uh, the question, you know, why is that the routing that's being used when it's not necessarily the optimal routing that could be used to get the traffic from where you are to, to the endpoint. So that's sort of one of the ways to use this information. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. This is really just an introductory guide to using the tool and making decisions. Um, have a look below for the links that I talked about at the start uh, to give you something to read through. And uh, hopefully this will, will help you with some of your network issues. Thank you.